Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Safeguard Your File Sharing with, secure, with a Secure Solution. During today's webinar, we will explore what you should be looking for in an EFSS or file sharing and collaboration solution. And I'm here with my co-host, Dan Freeman. Dan, are you there? I am. Great. All right, before we kick things off, I wanted to let everyone know that we are recording the event and we will send out the link after the um, after the event is complete. Also, during this trying time, our webinar hosting platform is seeing an increase in demand and usage. And so we do apologize if there are any glitches during the webinar. As I mentioned, we will be sending out the recording after the event. Also, please feel free to ask questions throughout the webinar as we'll have a team of members online to answer them and we'll also try to answer a few throughout verbally as well. And finally, a survey will display at the close of the presentation. If you fill that out, it'll give us great feedback on what parts of the presentation were most helpful. And you can also reiterate any questions that, were, that weren't answered during today's uh, event and somebody will get back to you. All right, let's go through our agenda for today. First, we'll walk you through some of the challenges in free EFSS solutions today. Then we'll review what you should consider for your organization in a file sharing and collaboration tool. And then in addition, we'll explain how managed file transfer addresses file sync and share, and, and then also go through some use cases. Then we will close with a live demo of Go Anywhere MFT and wrap up with some Q&A. All right, Dan, let me introduce you here. All right, so our presenter today is Dan Freeman, and he has spent the last 10 years of his career in various security roles, ranging from systems engineer to security officer. He currently serves as senior solutions consultant at Help Systems for the Go Anywhere product line. All right, Dan, I'm gonna turn things over to you. Thanks for being here, you can take it away. All right, thanks, Dan, I appreciate that. And thanks everybody for taking a little time out. Times are a little busy. Uh, for joining us today. I uh, hope everybody is doing okay uh, with the, the COVID-19 running around, uh, physically, financially, uh, probably most importantly mentally, it seems like. Um, I don't know about you guys, that was kind of crazy that uh, folks kind of rushing out and getting bottled water and toilet paper. But just the other day, I went to the store to just get some dishwashing soap pods, and all those were out too. It's kind of interesting. Uh, but plenty of dish soap, so people are okay you know, doing the manual or not really that concerned about manually cleaning, but as long as they have their dishwasher soap. So interesting times. Anywho, uh, speaking of that stuff, um, did you guys hear that the that all the sweat lodge conferences canceled as well? Uh, pretty crazy. Uh, it's because there's no TP. Okay, that one was pretty bad. Uh, full disclosure, I just made that one up about 20 minutes ago. So we'll, we'll uh, hopefully give you some slack there. All right. Well, let's get moving here. Um, so talking about the EFSS, uh, looking at for a lot of those collaboration tools, um, a lot of times, and that's not just with the EFSS, as we all know, that uh, a lot of times we'd like to get away with that free tool. Um, a lot of times those are, in some cases, they can be good. Um, I know that we, uh, we do offer a, like an open PGP type source um, tool to do some PGP encryption decryption. Um, I believe there are some one-offs that are, are okay for those free type tools. But when you really start getting to an enterprise grade type solution or uh, overall um, idea of how you wanna handle your data, in this case, kind of that file sharing and collaboration in a secure manner, I think free kind of is a, a little stretch or actually kind of a big stretch um, to have that type of system in any kind of enterprise level solution. Um, obviously they are free, but we have that still being a cost. Um, a lot of it's gonna be, I think, from free tools, for the most part, don't have good centralized uh, administration. They don't have good access control. They don't have auditing and accountability. Um, a lot of times they're not gonna meet those business requirements when you're talking about, especially from a compliance and security standpoint. Um, we'll kind of see some other things too. Uh, a lot of times in our business nowadays, we do like to uh, transfer files, whether it's gonna be via some of the methods we're gonna show you today. Uh, email is still a, a huge proponent of communication. Um, not a huge fan of email from like a business communication standpoint, but people are very familiar with it, so they use that. Uh, so we kind of see large attachments coming to be a, a huge issue when it comes to email, not only just from a security perspective, but from the fact that your mail server can actually handle large attachments. We can kind of show you how those things can work as well, whether it's in email or 
outside of email. <clears throat> and also kind of that last bullet point there, do they offer that ample security? And this really gets to um, that centralized administration. Do you have full transparency onto what everybody's doing? Um, a lot of times we see those free tools as uh, any of you sysadmins out there that you'll probably attest to that um, a lot of times they're just one-off PC type apps. Uh, or if they are a, a free tool, a lot of times, again, their auditing and accountability and access control management is really, really limited, if even they're really at all. Um, a lot of times they're kind of just standalone or siloed uh, solutions, and it's really, really hard to keep track of anything from an accountability standpoint. Okay, so what can we look for in an EFS solution? Um, I think that top left bullet point of security kind of wraps up the rest of them. Um, but from like a reporting standpoint, uh, we definitely want to have that detailed reporting, again, that centralized area, so that we can have that transparency. We can see what's going on at any given time. Uh, we definitely want to be able to report on certain instances, maybe to be proactive uh, and at best, you know, very, very quickly reactive to certain things that are going on. So we definitely want to have those reports, um, if not only just from a sysadmin alerting perspective, but also from a maybe C-level staff members, they want to know what's going on with our stuff or our files, whether they're sensitive information or not at any given time. And probably even more importantly, uh, any auditor that uh, walks through your door, which is always a fun situation. Uh, role management, again, we want to definitely have some sort of RBAC type roles uh, within the solution, whether it's, you know, to provide least privilege, uh, maybe even have job separation duties if you're talking about on the admin side, uh, or just those privileges that you're giving to those users that are logging into your system to do that file type collaboration. So we definitely want to have that access control role management. Um, flexibility, we kind of talk about a lot of things like the feature richness of the application or service that you do have. Um, maybe have different uh, protocols uh, for certain things. Maybe you, what you would normally do in email, uh, maybe you want to do it in a, a more of a collaboration uh, go drive, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But just having different methods, different features, different potential protocols, uh, having things like self-service. Um, maybe you don't want your admins to be constantly um, adding users to the system. Maybe you want some self-registration, some self-password reset options. You want to have that flexibility in all different types of areas. Uh, auditing, kind of, I think this one's pretty straightforward. This is where you do have that detailed auditing so that you can, at any given point, hopefully, be able to tell your auditor or your manager or just yourself for peace of mind what's going on in your system at any given time and who's doing it, what they're changing, things like that. And then encryption, this is probably one of the um, probably top items, I guess, that security folks will talk about. Uh, if nothing else, if you can't do a whole lot of things, maybe your budget doesn't provide for all these fun tools, uh, at least encrypt your data at rest and in transfer. You're always going to hear those things. And then another one that's not really on this list, uh, but also from maybe the security standpoint, the multi-factor authentication. Those are probably two, I think, uh, pretty high, pretty relatively easy things that admins can do that don't cost a ton of money. Um, so those are things that we want to pay attention to as well. Okay, so how MFT addresses file sync and share. Um, we'll kind of look at these these four different uh, uh, bullet points or uh, I guess infographic things that we're looking at here on the slide. Uh, we'll talk about all four of these. Um, all four of these are going to be um, part of or accessible via our HTTPS um, um, protocol or web client. So we'll kind of see how this works in. Um, There'll be a couple other methods as well um, that we can access these. We'll kind of go through that. But for the most part, all four of these are going to be a part of that HTTPS secure web client listener that go anywhere will provide. Um, we'll kind of dive, I think, a little bit more into these in the next couple of slides. Uh, but GoDrive, real high level, is kind of your collaboration piece. Uh, think of like a box, Dropbox, um, maybe even like a SharePoint uh, where you can check things in and out. You can have revision history, things like that. Uh, secure folders, my best way to describe this, it's a little bit more than this, but I always say it's like the web version of an, a traditional FTP client. Um, so a lot of people supplement or even replace traditional FTP and just go with a web-based secure folder where they can log in, they get folders that the administrators give them access to, and now they can drag and drop files straight from their desktop right into the actual browser. Uh, secure mail, this is a way that we can leverage, I think one of our favorite methods of communication, uh, but we can also do it in a secure manner now. 
um, to where we can have our contents encrypted on our own network and it will be encrypted at rest. And we're basically sending them a link for them to come back into your network to see that email and pull down any um, attachment, attachments, should there be any, via your HTTPS web portal. Um, this is because we do keep the information on your own network. Um, it is now kind of up to you uh, as far as the disk space is concerned. Um, you can now send technically emails with you know a gig attachment. Now there's gonna be a little red asterisk. I'll point out what that red asterisk means on the file, no file size limitation. Um, I'll give you that little caveat when we jump in the product. Um, and anywho, uh, the secure forms, this is going to be a way, kind of a web-based form where you're going to have certain, maybe requesting certain information. Uh, maybe it's as simple as maybe a help desk ticketing system. I'll kind of show you something like that, where people are just putting in their name, maybe the OS they're on, maybe dragging in a file to for like a log file. Uh, but point is, when they actually fill out that information, they submit it, that information is going to go back into the backend uh, application to process that information however you see fit and do some results. And we'll kind of see a couple examples of that. Okay, real quick, we'll kind of cover this uh, quickly. I think we'll the demo will we'll flush this stuff out. Um, but a lot of this, again, that file sharing and collaboration, um, this as well as uh, the Go Drive is very similar to Secure Mail in that you do have on-premise uh, storage of files. Uh, these files, by default, uh, the entire directory of Go Drive, no matter what users are using Go Drive, that entire directory is uh, AES 256 bit encrypted at rest. So there's that at rest uh, kind of requirement or desired result for your data. Um, you can do things like set those disk quotas. We can do those roles and permissions at the folder and file level. Um, everything, which is kind of nice, a couple things, it being on-prem, we can have it encrypted at rest. And we also kind of have that full audit trails of all activity. Um, so we know um, what's going in and out of our network depending upon those audit trails through that Go Drive uh, service. So we have full control of that type of information, whereas maybe something else, uh, an O365 or SharePoint or maybe some of the cloud service might be a little bit more difficult to have that transparency and visibility into everything that is actually going on. Um, they are per user cost, but there is no subscription fees. It's kind of a perpetual license per user. Um, and things like the revision histories, trash bins, we can view uh, comments, we can now synchronize with a desktop client, which I will show you that as well, it'll probably make more sense. And anything from the device management. Um, the, we do have a new iOS app for iPads and iPhones. There is an Android app. Um, it is actually going under revision. That's why you're not really seeing that up here. Um, but it is out there, the older version of the new Android app is coming out very, very soon. Uh, so this is kind of just doing a, a little comparison of GoDrive versus Secure Folders, because a lot of folks, when we do these things, they kind of wonder what's the difference between the two. Um, I think they're, 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 they look the same. Uh, that's on the same web client. Uh, you can drag and drop most of those same types of features. You have a folder structure. There's going to be a couple differences. Uh, the main ones are going to be you have a lot of that different true collaboration between GoDrive. Uh, as you don't have with secure folders. Secure folders, you're not gonna have that revision history, you're not gonna have the trash bin, you can't do comments. Um, you can't really do like, have people join a certain maybe folder or group and uh, have those notifications when somebody uploads or changes the file. The actual owner can decide what kind of uploads or what kind of email notifications that person gets when things are being done to that particular share. So GoDrive is more of a true collaboration um, uh, tool for your users. Uh, secure folders is going to be, again, I think more for that um, uh, supplement or replacement to a traditional FTP where you can kind of do uh, that ease of use. Uh, signing into a web browser, pretty much everyone knows how to do. You don't have to maintain like a WinSCP or FileZilla client to actually transfer files via traditional FTP method. Uh, makes things, I think, a lot easier. Um, both of them are perpetual, but one is the Go Drive is a user base, but it's a one time cost. And then the uh, secure folders is a server um, based type pricing model on there. Um, one thing to point out, because you might be wondering what does optional mean on the AES 256 bit encryption, we did talk about the Go Drive. That's always, it doesn't matter, it's the default. You can't turn it off. Everything in Go Drive is going to be encrypted at rest. Uh, secure folders. The admins will determine where the physical location is, where those secure virtual folders are pointing, and they can make those encrypted folders within Go Anywhere so they're actually encrypted. By default, they don't have to be though. So that's why it kind of says optional. So it's can be, doesn't have to be though. Now, secure mail, 
Um, again, we'll kind of run through this, but for the most part, we just mentioned uh, when you send out an email, uh, it's going to basically replace all the contents into our, what I call a packages directory. It'll be on your network and that packages directory will be a unique folder that holds all the contents of that email. And we're gonna strip everything off and basically send the recipient just a link. So when they get that link, they can click on it and essentially they're going back into your network over your HTTPS web listener. And then there's multiple ways that you can have them authentic authenticate, whether it's they just get the URL, whether it's password protected, and they have to put in a one-time password, or they actually have to be an actual user on your system to actually log in and then receive those emails. So that's the basic component of what those secure mails are going to be doing. Uh, again, it says no file size limits. I, I should have probably put an asterisk there. I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, and it actually goes for anything in our HTTPS listener. I'll kind of show you what I mean by that. So. Um, and then also we kind of looked at these uh, customizable email templates. There's templates, whether it's the Go Drive, whether it's email templates, uh, web user templates. Uh, they're all basically XML files uh, on your network, on the insta installation directory. You have access to those XML files. You can modify those however you see fit. Uh, what's really cool is within the product, um, for those that actually have Go Anywhere already, you would know what I'm talking about. If you don't, uh, there's an application help within the product. Uh, that's one thing where it'll go through, it'll tell you every single XML file template out there, and it'll tell you every single option that you can add or every attribute. So the help guide, uh, real quick plug-in for that is amazing within the product, by the way. Kind of a little off topic, but really, really helps, especially in situations like, like that. Um, and then lastly, uh, secure forms, again, kind of just a web-based form where you're going to create everything that you see here on this form, this company name, address, phone, email. These are things that you're going to configure on the back end. It's it's just like, uh, it's just drag and drop. You kind of put in different fields. You give them a, a name, like company name is the name of that field, company address, things like that. Um, you decide what they are, whether they're text boxes, radio buttons, check boxes, drop down lists, whatever. The main point is every single field that you define, it's gonna have a unique variable tied to it. So when the user hits that submit button up there, it's gonna take everything that they filled in and it's gonna pass that back to a project or think of it like scripting. If you don't know what projects are and go anywhere, it's gonna take all those parameters and now I can do whatever it is I want with those. Whether I'm maybe uh, verifying information on the backend database, or maybe I'm just inserting that information into a backend database, giving me a result and then maybe kicking that a file back to these folks saying, hey, by the way, your submission was successful or it failed because of blah. So there's a lot of different things. We'll go over a couple examples of secure forms, um, but that's kind of your high level uh, look at secure forms. One thing to note also, if we do kick back something to the user, um, whether it's a file, uh, those files also by default, then you can't change this. Those will also be held in a AES-256 bit encrypted at rest. Uh, location. Obviously, if they download it, they're going to download it over an HTTPS tunnel, so it's secure, but once it's on their network, obviously, they are responsible for that file at that point. Um, okay, yeah, so new in 2020, um, Help Systems acquired uh, ClearSwift, uh, if you did or did not know that, um, but it was earlier this year, a couple months ago, uh, which is really cool. This can be, well, actually, we are doing our own uh, webinar with ClearSwift uh, later this year, um, so I won't dive too much into it, but for a context of what we're looking at today, and we'll do a couple, at least one example, I believe, um, I have on the docket to kind of show how this can come into play. Um, I think I'm gonna do one where we'll upload a file via secure folders, and uh, that file that gets uploaded, there'll be a couple rules, a little trigger that kicks off. It'll look for, you know, who was the web user that uploaded, maybe the physical file location, um, and because of that, it's going to send that information, that file or files, whatever we're going to do, it's going to send it to this ICAP server and it'll do some inspection. So let me back up a second. So what is ICAP? ICAP is kind of just a, a protocol that's very, very common for a lot of your antivirus um, solutions, uh, data loss prevention solutions. Um, ours, again, uh, that we acquired was ClearSwift. So this is something that's pretty cool that you can start now inspecting those files at any point of that transfer, usually before you send something out or before something comes in, before you actually do those things. Um, what's really cool is uh, obviously it does AV scanning. Uh, the ClearSwift engine has three different antivirus uh, engines that you can that you can license. So you can have three different ones. Um, but it also does uh, that DLP scanning, so it does a lot of content, deep content inspection. 
again, not going to get terribly into it, but one thing that I think is really cool, and, we'll, and I actually will demo, is it does have OCR technology. So if I did a screenshot and threw something in the body of an email that had PHI in it and tried to send it out, it can catch that, or even like JPEGs and things like that. So I know a lot of them don't have that capability to do that OCR type capability, so that's uh, pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll kind of demo uh, a little piece of that ICAP integration. Um, ICAP, if, if you guys are go anywhere users, you know that this has always been a resource of ours. Um, just kind of want to point out obviously that we acquired ClearSort and so that's kind of what we're using now, kind of tightly integrated. More to come on that though. Um, so a couple of the use cases, uh, like the collect payment up in the left-hand corner, that's kind of that secure form. So you can have that information, whether it's entering in credit card information, um, whatever it is that you're trying to enter into those secure forms, now I can have that publicly accessible just as a web URL that people can navigate to and then put in the information, hit submit. And then obviously I can give them a response if a response is warranted. Um, I can kick them back, maybe a receipt, um, whatever the case may be. Uh, so just a nice secure way to put things on a web-based front-end form so that users can go to and access and put information. Um, I keep saying users and I keep thinking of, you know, actually going to a site and typing and going somewhere, but this can also be SOAP and REST enabled. So you can have applications actually pushing and submitting information to a secure form, leveraging SOAP or REST technology. So you can do that as well. Uh, send files to the home office. I think this is pretty straightforward. Um, you can definitely do this via a couple ways, actually. Um, so if you're remote, you could do it via uh, secure mail, should you want to do that. Um, if you're doing, again, like these investigators, sensitive data sent it back to the office for processing, um, you could do it via secure folders, uh, Go Drive. You could actually probably do it pretty much any way possible. You could technically, if you wanted to, for some reason, you could do a secure form. Um, or it could just be as simple as uh, picture files that you need just need to upload to your secure folders or Go Drive location. So you can send those as well via a mobile client. And then upload ballots. Uh, this was one here that we had. There was one project that we had again. This was also leveraging secure forms. Uh, so they were putting in certain information, obviously what uh, region they were in, things like that. Because of the region they put it in, that backend project would process that and actually upload things to a specific Go Drive location that that actual maybe county or a county office had access to. So that they could get notified to say, oh, okay, cool. Hey, hey there's some more stuff out here for us to process. So a lot of different ways there. And then store files here, the store documents, folders, securely on network servers. Uh, so this is gonna be pushing more towards the Go Drive. Um, again, that at rest encryption and a lot of different ways that we can now share files out so that a multitude of people can have access to the same locations, uh, multiple revision histories, uh, get notifications when things are changed, stuff like that. So kind of your collaboration type tool. Okay, cool. So let's jump out of here and let's get into here. Um, I'm going to kind of switch between a couple instances here. I'll kind of tell you why in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and log in here first. And for any, uh, hopefully maybe there's some sysadmins out there because I'm going to very, very quickly run through just kind of the security aspect on the server side of things. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I just definitely want to cover this so you know where we're coming from. Uh, the HTTPS uh, listeners, what we're going to be talking about uh, for the most part, or actually for the entire conversation, because these are all, or this is where all the modules are going to be held. Uh, so within that HTTP listener, obviously you can apply a certificate to that listener. Uh, those certificates are going to be things that one, either you create uh, within the product itself and then put it right on here, uh, or two is maybe a wildcard cert, which is pretty common for people to import and then actually throw it in here. Um, kind of on that note, with that key management system to actually create those certificates, uh, it's very, very simple. If you do want to create a cert, you just kind of put in your information, decide on the algorithms, key size, the actual signature algorithm, and go on through here. Uh, one thing that was added very, very recently is now we can actually define the extended key usage. Uh, so if this is just going to be a server certificate, um, that's great, and we can do that. Probably not going to be using email protection for this particular cert, so you can definitely decide on what you want to use there as well. Um, if you're importing, it's pretty straightforward as well. You just import and actually pull that P12 or PFX file across with the private key and then apply it to your HTTPS listener. Um, going back to the listener real quick, more on this security very, very quickly. Um, you can 
on this section here. One thing that I think is really, really important is on the enabled SSL protocols, now you can, as the server side, say, hey, by the way, I'm going to force any person connecting to my web server to negotiate TLS version 1.2 in this case. So if I go to that local instance listener here, I can do an inspection and I can see if we go to this section here, I can see that, yes, it looks like I am connecting using TLS 1.2. Everything looks good. We're using different protocols, cypher suites, and algorithms that are going to be, as far as Chrome is concerned, these are going to be good, good to go settings. Um, so those are things as an admin, you can start choosing what cypher suites you're going to use, what protocols you're going to allow, and then obviously the encryption and, and key strength on the certificate itself. So those are things that you can do as an admin. Um, another th quick thing, a um, couple settings here. Uh, you can choose to not allow some of these convenient settings, as I kind of like to put, save login credentials, session IDs, embedded within iframes, which is probably a good thing. And then also, speaking of kind of the certificates, you can always uh, enforce that HSTS, or the HTTP Strict Transport Security Protocol, so that you can prevent people from saying, oh yeah, you know what, I'm gonna override those invalid certificate warnings. We wanna make sure that they're actually adhering to those, so we can do that as well. Okay, as, as my little asterisk promised here, by default, out of the box, this HTTPS section does have a limitation of four gig. Uh, per upload file size. Now this is at the HTTPS listener level, so this is gonna affect every single module we're gonna talk about today. Um, so it is four gig by default, so you can increase this to whatever you want though. Um, the only limitation that's really gonna probably come into play is your browser limitations. Uh, most of them I think support at least 64 gig, but this is where we get the, hey, we don't care what size it is for secure mail, uploads, things like that. But by default, it is four gig, but you can obviously change that to whatever you want to. All right, the other thing from the security standpoint that I just want to point out really, really quick is um, the actual web users when they're coming in there. Uh, we talked about encryption uh, from a transfer perspective, the HTTPS protocol. We talked a little bit from encryption at rest uh, with the AES 256 bit encryption or encrypted folders. Uh, but maybe from the actual uh, MFA standpoint, which is another one that we just briefly mentioned, we can also leverage MFA and in this case from our HTTPS protocol in a multitude of ways. I'm just gonna show you one for now, but you could do uh, username, password, certificate, uh, TOTP options, radius, or even our own go anywhere one-time password, which leverages email or SMS, whatever you have available. So we can be a little bit more secure there. So to kind of show that here, let's log in as the go anywhere user account and type in the password. And we should get a yep, little QR code here. So this is signifying that I am leveraging TOTP. So what you're not seeing is I'm taking my phone right now and I'm taking a picture of that QR code. And now I can actually, and I'm using Google Auth, but you can use like uh, Microsoft Authenticator, Duo, Authy, things like that. So that gives me a little six digit code. So now I have to have an actual phone device or whatever device I'm pushing this to, as well as having something that I know, my username and password. So another method of security to even get into the four different modules that we're going to talk about today. Now I'm going to switch gears on you. I'm going to go to a different web client, so hopefully that's not terribly confusing. We're going to go through now and look at um, the different options. So we'll start with uh, kind of the secure folders. So I'm going to log in here first to kind of pop into here. And you'll notice they don't have the word secure in front of them. So it just says files, mail, forms. This is secure folders, go drive, secure mail, secure forms. Just more of a clarification uh, from you kind of revamp the, the web GUI a, just a few months ago in version 6.0. In any case, uh, with the secure folders, one thing to kind of show you on the back end so that this makes a little bit more sense. So you can kind of see what the administrators are doing on the back ends and how it translates to the web users and what they see. So if we look at those web users, specifically the Freeman, we'll kind of open up and look at the folder section. We see this blob storage incoming not secure S3 bucket. So we should see those, okay, we see those. Looks like he might have uploaded something else as well. So this is why I'm seeing what I'm seeing when I log in as D Freeman, because the admins gave me rights to these folders and where these are pointing physically on the back end, I kind of mentioned that to you, 
that's totally up to the admins. Looks like this is going to an Azure blob storage. This is going to a Linux mount, uh, another Linux mount, and this is an S3 bucket. So this is where the admins decide where they're physically going. Um, if there's disk quotas, you know, if these uh, physical locations are actually encrypted, uh, this S3 bucket actually is AES 256-bit uh, encrypted. Those are the things that you're not going to see from the um, web user perspective. You're just going to see what you have. But from a functionality perspective, now as a web user, I can come in here and it can be as simple as you know just taking files from my desktop and just dragging it right on an interface where it says just let go. And it can upload a file and now I've got that there to where I can now take that file and maybe I want to share it with somebody, um, which is just going to uh, pull this open and now I can send basically an invite. This is going to invite a, a person to share this file with. Now, what that means is they're going to have to be an actual user on the system. Uh, I'll kind of show you a self-registration option. Kind of, we talked about that, that self-service. Um, or they can do things simply as maybe just send it to. Uh, send to option is actually going to leverage your secure mail to actually send a secure mail to that person with this as an attachment. So a couple different options there. Uh, a couple other things you can do too. Um, if you do have all these modules, you can always do things like maybe even just want to copy something to the Go Drive location because it is something that you want it to be a shared folder for all your, your folks to do. But you want the revision history. You want the ability to notify when things happen. So you want it to be kind of more than just secure folders. You actually want to throw that in your, your uh, Go Drive location. So now we can actually share that out and manage permissions and things like that. To have more of that, and you kind of notice this down here. Now I'm getting notified that something was created in my Go Drive directory, and we'll kind of see a little bit more about that in a second. Um, maybe from a security perspective, uh, you've got a location that you're giving your users, and all these locations you're okay with PHI maybe or whatever, but maybe to simulate something that you don't want to happen, uh, and it doesn't have to say not secure, obviously, just could just kind of emulate maybe their entire directory. You don't want them, this person shouldn't be uploading anything sensitive. So we can look at maybe, um, we'll look at this JPEG to kind of show you that ICAP, um, that OCR type technology. So if I open up this, this uh, little JPEG file, um, hopefully you guys can see that, it's kind of small. Um, just has a social security number down here. And let's say that they tried to upload that to their location and they're uploading that file and this user is not supposed to be, or maybe we've got, a, data classification and we don't want information to be on a certain drive on our network and this virtual location happens to be pointing to said location where we shouldn't have PHI or anything there. So hopefully uh, we'll open this up and in this case you'll see that the social security number did get redacted. So what you didn't see on the back end is things that and again it's too long I guess for this conversation. Um, this basically said, hey, anytime this user uploads a folder to a certain directory, in this case, that's not secure location, I need you to call a project and filter that, send that to my ICAP server, in our case, this ClearSwift ICAP server, and I need you to scan that, and if there's any sensitive information that I've defined, social security number was one of them, I need you to redact that, and then you can place it there. So you can do that. Now, what we could have done is we could have blocked it completely, and then maybe send an email to the person saying, hey, by the way, this got blocked because of blah, 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 policy. So I think that you can leverage from that as well. All right, let's move over. I know we're running out of time here. Let's move over to the Go Drive. <clears throat> Again, Go Drive, this is going to be more of the collaboration tool. You're going to kind of start seeing things that you didn't see on the secure folders, whether or not people are making comments. So maybe I want to you know, make some comments and share it with other Go Drive users or share, sorry, the comments of the little bubble here. So you can make some comments. Uh, here's some comments here. Oh, that one I don't own. That's my home directory anyway. Yep. So we can make some comments, save that, and that little bubble should light up there. Now we've got some comments, so you can kind of hover over it and see that someone's made comments. The other difference that you're going to see here, um, all these folders and all these directories, these are not supplied by the administrator. Whereas on the, the secure folders, all these are supplied. I didn't create them as a user. I probably don't even have rights to. If the admin doesn't give me rights to, I can't even create folders. This is completely different. If you give a user Go Drive access with full access, um, they can now do whatever it is they want as far as creating folders. Because remember, this is all going back in a, just a kind of a blob, a Go Drive blob that is all AES 256 bit encrypted. It's nothing that you can go back to the, the file system and actually browse through. 
You cannot do it. The only way that you can browse files in GoDrive is to actually be an authenticated user to leverage these um, files and folders. So a couple things that you can do. So let's go to let's go to like this webinars folder here, and we can do things like maybe we do want to share. So there's a lot of different sharing options. Mail means you're going to leverage secure mail to send them uh, files if you want to, or a file. Uh, Go Drive means you're going to send this to them, and they're going to be a um, um, a user that now can, when they log into their Go Drive, they're going to now see this webinars folder, depending upon what access I give to that person, and that could be contributor, editor, owner, or just viewer rights. And here's some of those email notifications. Myself as the owner, I'm going to trigger an event or an email notification when anybody does a download, upload, comment, or delete on that particular folder that I just sent. I don't have to, maybe I don't want to get bothered that much, but you can do that. And then the last one, the share, there's a public link option as well. So maybe you don't, you want to share things, but they're not GoDrive users and you don't even want them to be GoDrive users. You don't want them to be a user on your system. You can now do a public link instead. So now that that person can get to that information in this particular webinars folder via this web link that I'm going to send them. Um, you can have it just URL protected, meaning there's no password. You can put a password if you want. And then you can also expire after maybe a certain amount of days. And then you give them the rights to basically log in and, and download or read. And that's about it. Or they can actually be a contributor where they can actually start uploading. They can make changes, things like that. So different options that you have to share out your different folders or files within GoDrive. Uh, one thing quickly to notice as well, the GoDrive module does have a desktop client as well. Um, and what this really allows you to do is now I can map basically a drive. So when I click on this G drive, which is this stuff back here, I can now see it as like a local map drive. So you're gonna see all the same folders is all over here. If I start deleting stuff out of here, it's going to be, it's, it's both ways. Um, so this AS3 and 4S, whatever back here, if I refresh this, that should go away. So it should be bi-directional syncing. Yep, so the AS3 is gone. In fact, that should be now in our, our little trash bin. And we should be able to see that. Maybe we can restore it if we want, things like that. So it is bi-directional bi -directional syncing, whether you're in the web client or whether you're actually on, and we can see that it actually got created down here, uh, or the actual desktop client, which acts as basically a map drive. Okay, let's move over to secure mail. Let's kind of leverage GoDrive um, to show off a little bit of secure mail. Um, maybe we want to uh, take the contents of this DIY folder, uh, whatever this is, uh, okay, we got some fairly large files here. So maybe not the whole thing. Let me just grab one of these. And what we can do is we can just maybe drag and drop that right into the compose section. So if I want to take this file, I can just drag it right over here and throw it in the compose section. And now granted, this is about 300 megs, so it might take a little bit because it's actually making a copy into my packages directory as we speak. So it's kind of doing that. Okay, so now it's, now it's actually copied over there. You see it's a 295 meg attachment. And now I can start sending this to obviously whoever I want to, gmail.com, and we'll say um, uh, DIY stuff. And we got that attached already, and we can hit send. Let's send it on its way. We've got a few options. You can allow them a certain amount of downloads. You can allow them to reply, because maybe they're not a user, but you want them to be able to attach sensitive information to reply to this, to leverage your system. Sure, you could do that. Uh, you could password protect it if you wanted to via email or text. I'm just for simplicity's sake, I'm not going to. And we can send that off. So what that did is I just was able to drag and drop, copy something from GoDrive right into a secure mail package. It's 300 meg. You guys know as well as I do, if you're leveraging exchange, that's gonna be way over that send receive connector limit. Usually it's somewhere around 20 to 30 meg. Uh, but you don't have to worry about that because that's not going through exchange. All exchange is doing is pushing out the email with the link on the other end. Um, and I know Gmail delays so much, so, oh, no, actually it came through quick. That's kind of surprising. So this is what they're gonna see on the recipient end. Um, basically, you're gonna see, okay, here's what he put in there. Obviously, I can't click on it because I need to click on this download files, which if you look in the bottom left-hand corner down here, it'll show you that it's coming back to my HTTPS portal.lenoma.com location. So I'm basically just diving back into that network over that HTTPS portal, specifically going into that unique 36 identifier where that specific package and email was. So now I can actually download those attachments. 
Um, okay, kind of looking through. Let's try one real quick. Let's leverage. Let's see if we can leverage the um, uh, ICAP again. One thing I need to do though before I forget, I want to do something like a before secure mail send trigger because encrypted mail is obviously going to encrypt the messages or secure mail. It's going to encrypt the messages and now uh, we might potentially not be able to inspect that traffic. But within Go Anywhere, there's a before secure mail send trigger. So if we do this right, let me make sure I turn this policy route back on though. Let's enable that. And so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and we'll leverage the OCR technology again, and we'll try to send an email with a credit card number in as an attachment. So let's go make sure that policy updates here. And I'm sure hopefully it'll go by the time I get over there. So let's go to compose. And we can do this via the web client. We can also use Outlook as a plugin. So you could definitely use your Outlook, which probably most people are, is what they're using. Uh, we'll do Lenoma portal again. Um, testing stuff I shouldn't send. And let's browse to, and this time let's go to not a redaction, but let's go to email. We'll do this credit card JPEG. So if I open this up, so you can see stuff in there. There's a bogus credit card in there, but it should fit the regex that we're looking for. So let's just drag that onto my web interface to track that in there. And I think that's saved by now. Yep, I think that should have been saved. Well, let's go ahead and not sure why there's two. Let's take that guy out and let's send this one on the way. Uh, sounds good, we'll just do that. And let's open up my email. And I should get a notification saying this email was blocked per policy, and there it is. So it popped in there. So this one, all this project was doing is it was sending the file to my ClearSwift ICAP device. So if I actually hover over here, we should see uh, 1041. Uh, this actually got blocked per the scan email contents policy rule, which is basically just scanning the email and its, and its attachments, in this case a JPEG. So it was leveraging again that OCR technology to see that there was a credit card in that actual attachment, in this case, a JPEG attachment. And then all I'm doing in this one is I'm just sending an email to the person who sent the message saying, by the way, this was denied. So at least they know, so they can contact the admin and say, hey, why was this denied or what's going on, what have you. So another way that you can hopefully prevent information leaving the organization that should not be leaving. Okay, let's move on to our last one here. Um, so I want to hopefully leave some time for some questions. Uh, so secure forms, um, this one here, I kind of mentioned um, as simple as maybe a help desk ticketing system. Now, mind you, I'm logged in as a web user and I have these available to me. Uh, these can be available via the public should the admin let that be um, available. And they could also be exposed to REST and SOAP should they want to. So it doesn't have to be a web user like you're seeing me. It could be just you going to this site, which I do think this one's actually publicly accessible, by the way. Uh, but this one is just looking for name, um, I have issues, whatever the issue is, whatever your OS is, probably Linux or Windows, I mean, and then you could probably be uploading, let's say, a log file, um, but whatever, let's just get a bit something. So this user is going to submit this as a help disk ticket. So what's happening in the background is all four of these pieces of information get passed back to a project which I think all I'm doing is send an email to the help desk saying, hey, by the way, this person has a ticket. Um, it looks like we have a couple things. It's giving me a message back saying, yes, by the way, just for your peace of mind, it was submitted successfully. And by the way, here's your receipt. So here you go, here's your receipt. So you can have proof that you submitted this. And then on the back end, I think all I'm doing is, yeah. So I've got a little go anywhere help desk request that got sent to the help desk group, or in this case, it's just me. So we could do things like that, pretty simple. Um, a lot of use cases I see sometimes are going to be um, ways to allow your users or your employees or whoever an ability to do searching, to search maybe a backend ERP or database or something like that to where obviously you don't want to give them access to that um, backend ERP or, you know, most people don't have SQL knowledge to be able to, you know, put together a, a query that would even make sense. So a lot of times we could do things like, and this is super simple, you could create as many, obviously, uh, criteria as you wanted, but this one's just gonna give you a report of everybody that makes over a certain amount of money that you wanna put in there. So we can put in 68 or $7,000, and I'm gonna submit. So when I submit this, it's just gonna take this and go to a project that's gonna do a SQL query. It's gonna look for every employee that makes $67,000 or more, 
and give me a PDF report. And it's also gonna shoot it over to my Go Drive, which you see right here. We've got our Go Drive notification that this employee's PDF was actually put in my Go Drive location. And I've got a link here I can also click on to give me, hopefully, my PDF report of everybody, their employee ID, blah, 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 and their actual salary. Now these aren't real users, so we're okay showing this. Um, yeah, with it, I just kind of looked at the time. With the interest of time, I'll kind of stop there uh, and let's see, I'll kind of kick it back over and let's see if we do have any questions. Should there be any? Yep. Um, can you hear me, Dan? Yeah, I can. Excellent. So we do have quite a few questions actually. So um, prior to going into um, the kind of the close here, I thought maybe it would be wise just to jump right into those. Um, and I don't know if it makes sense to speak to this or demo, but can you speak to or show uh, our MFT capabilities within an, the NFS mounts? Uh, within the NFS mounts? Um, so yeah, so NFS mounts or, um, well, first off, Go Anywhere can be installed on uh, virtually any OS, uh, except for like an I, um, uh, IBMI, or not, sorry, definitely can be installed on IBMI, um, the mainframe. Um, so if we installed on a Linux machine or um, Windows or whatever, it doesn't really matter. We just need to make sure that we can connect, uh, whether it's going to be native to the OS uh, to to do some type of NFS mounts to connect to those. Um, we can leverage those through our network shares resource. Uh, one thing I know I didn't kind of show is within the resources. Those are ways that you can connect out to different uh, servers or services like SAN, NAS, NFS mounts. Um, SMB shares, uh, things like that, so that we can access those to be maybe their destination locations for your web users' home directory or whatever, um, things like that. Great. Um, another question here Could you speak to the differences between Go Anywhere MFT and a solution similar to, say, SharePoint for like maybe for okay. like user, user file sharing? Right. So um, some of the differences between those uh, SharePoint. Um, that's a really good question. Um, if, if you're using like your SharePoint online, I suppose, um, I guess that's not hosted locally. Uh, the Go Drive component is kind of all back end. Uh, it's not like a web dev server with uh, SharePoint. Um, it does have that AES 256 on the back end that everything is encrypted at rest. Uh, but for the most part on the sharing and collaboration type features, uh, we have it where you can lock, exclusively lock, or just you know lock it to where people can actually pull it down and make changes. Very similar to the checkout method with SharePoint, where you check out a file and then check it back in. Uh, revision histories, things like that, they're, they are very, very similar. I think the biggest difference within Go Drive is, one, it's inherent uh, and native to the Go Anywhere application or MFT in general. So we have that single, pane of glass or administration, we can control what comes in and out, we can audit what goes in and out, and then we can also have everything encrypted at rest. So I think from the functionality, they're pretty similar. A lot of those are very, gonna be similar. Ours is just kind of built into the MFT so you can have kind of that, that uh, control and um, transparency with what's going on. Very good. Um, does, does Go Anywhere secure mail work in conjunction with Outlook mail? And if so, what encryption is done on the email? Um, so Outlook mail, I'm assuming you just mean using the Outlook client, um, unless I'm missing something there. Uh, but yes, it does work with the Outlook client. Um, it does have a plugin. Um, all that's going to be is that obviously the Outlook client is just kind of your front end to exchange, uh, just your way to compose messages. Same thing with secure mail. It's just a plugin. Uh, so it'll have three little, I bet I could probably actually show and make more sense. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Um, so yeah, within, within here, if you do a new mail within your Outlook client, this is where you can have that Outlook plugin installed, uh, where you can just do your send secure mail. Um, this is going to, again, it's going to leverage the AES 256 bit encryption for anything uh, of the email contents because it's going to be stripped off and stored in our packages directory. And then obviously the email that actually gets sent out, which is just going to be a URL link, uh, will be over the HTTPS protocol leveraging whatever we have as far as that HTTPS and certificate on the um, listener itself. 
I don't know if I answered that right or not, but I don't know if Outlook Mail is something else besides the actual client. I think I think you hit that one. That's good. Um, does Go Anywhere MFT integrate with DLP solutions? And if so, how? So yeah, so the, everything that we kind of um, demoed on the uploading a file like getting blocked or redacted um, or stripped, uh, that was all exactly the, the DLP <clears throat> uh, component. That's where we look at, um, actually let me jump on this box. That's where we look at the resource and resources real quick. Again, that's the way that we can connect out to different servers and services to leverage, in this case, ICAP. Um, specifically, I'm pointing out to our ClearSwift ICAP device, and that's the one, if I go to this page here, this is just the interface, obviously the admin interface. This is where I can now start creating my lexical expressions or my policy rules to look for credit cards uh, like we did in that email or social security numbers, um, things like that. So that's going to be where your DLP and AV type um, stuff is going to come from or capability to integrate within go anywhere it's going to be from that icap resource have to add that first excellent can you speak to um how go anywhere mft would handle the use case of just server to server only file transfers um so, yeah server to server <clears throat> if you wanted to that could be as simple as um maybe just an sftp server uh, and i'm trying to think of the use case here, but whatever the server is, I don't know what it is, uh, but you can probably just add it as a resource first, whether it's just somebody else's SFTV server, then great, you can add that. Um, once you have that in place, now we can start doing things like, and I don't know exactly what we're gonna be doing, but if it was just maybe a server server, you're just maybe keeping something in sync or you're monitoring a certain folder on one server and then once you get certain files in, we kick off a project to just move them to another one. Or maybe we're gonna PGP encrypt them first and then we're gonna actually do a move or whatever protocol that we are gonna do for that move, that's totally up to you. And those things would be handled in what we call projects. Again, I don't, we don't have time to jump into, I think really the projects perspective, but just think of projects as kind of like traditional scripting where you start building out certain things, again, whatever the protocol is that you want to use to transfer that, or if you just want to do a simple copy or move, that's totally up to you. But maybe you did want to PGP encrypt the actual file, so you have file level encryption as well. Um, that's how you could do it. You could just do it automated from a, uh, a project to do those types of moves, whether it's a monitor, uh, however you want to actually kick them on a schedule, totally up to you. Hopefully that answered that question. Excellent. And then last question here, kind of jumping back to the NFS question, um, would would GoDrive be an alternative to an NFS file share? Um, well, uh, I don't know if it's really an alternative so much. I mean, it could be the supplement. It could, I mean, it could be a replacement, but I don't know if, and maybe I'm not fully understanding what NFS file shares are doing other than just a way to um store another way to have connections to different uh, storage um i mean GoDrive is completely i don't really think it's really so much a comparison um go drive the back end spot is going to be wherever you decide it sits so if i actually looked at this maybe this will kind of clear something up here uh go drive settings so you decide um, everything that's in go drive no matter who the user is that information is going to go within this location here. So this location, this on this mount, GA data, GA services, Go Drive. Everything that every single user that has Go Drive is going to be putting and creating and sharing and whatnot is going to go in this location. Um, all of it's going to be AES 256 bit encrypted. But as far as where the storage is, this could be a Windows share. This could be a, a NAS, SAN, whatever. I don't know if that really answers the question. But I think I'm kind of confused on comparing the two. But I, know, I might not, yeah, I don't know if I understand. Hopefully that Great. answered something. Okay, um, if there are any additional questions or if you'd like any additional clarification, if you wanna put that slide back up with all the ways to contact us. And also, if there are any other questions too, you can submit them in that questions pane and we can answer them after the event if there were any that didn't get answered. Um, 
So as I mentioned, we will be sending the recording out after the event. And if there are any additional questions, please feel free to contact us by any of the methods that you see up there on, on the screen. And um, thank you all very much for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate your time and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, guys.